Hello dear students, welcome to learning chemistry is easy and fun. Today I have prepared a worksheet for you based on calculations involving chemical equations and uh, two three numericals on molarity and molality. These concepts have been introduced in the earlier lesson and I hope that you have gone through them, gone through the previous video based on this. Now, what is most important for you to imbibe this particular concept is to practice questions based on this and that is the sole motive of this worksheet. But don't worry, I am not leaving you alone on that because this is a guided worksheet. I will help you sail through this, the questions which are based on the concepts that we have learnt in the earlier video. So, let's get started. Yes, I am waiting for you to get a pen and paper because without pen and paper, how will you practice? Go ahead, get a pen and paper and get ready to do the questions based on this. Let's get started with the first question over here. Now, there are many places that you will find over here like I have written CO2. So, it is uh, you know it uh, very clearly CO2 means we, I mean it to say CO2. It is the software that I am using which does not allow me to write it properly. Excuse me for that. So, CO2, H2O I hope you will be able to relate to it. Now, the question says uh, the first one 1.8 grams of an organic compound containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen all this question it would be in your best interest to copy this question down and there are six parts to this. Why are there six parts? As I said this worksheet is guided you know guided means the questions have been so framed that you will be able to go step by step and get the final answer. Now in most of the places you would find the question only up till this part 1.8 grams whatever is the statement and then straight away they will go on to ask you to determine the empirical and molecular formula of the compound given its molecular mass is 180. That is what you will find in most of the places. What I have done is I have split the question into parts which will take you to the answer. Okay? So, go ahead copy down the parts attempt the answers and I am very very sure if the fundamentals are clear you will not have any problem in answering these questions. For example, we are talking about the weight of carbon in the carbon dioxide. We know that the molar mass relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 right. Now, in 44 parts of carbon dioxide, I have only 12 parts of carbon, correct? Very So, we have 12 by 44. Now, how many grams of carbon dioxide do I have over here? 2.64. So, in 2.64 grams of carbon dioxide, how much of carbon will be there? Simple. Same way you can calculate the weight of hydrogen the percentage of carbon in the given sample. Now, how do we determine this? We have got a total amount of the organic compound as 1.8 grams, correct? So, the and you have also calculated the weight of carbon which is being obtained from which is coming from the organic compound. Now, you know the weight of carbon, you know the total weight of the compound, you can calculate its percentage just like you know the number of boys in the class, the number of girls in the class. So, the percentage of boys is number of boys divided by the total number in 200, right? As simple as that. So, you can calculate the percentage of carbon, you can calculate the percentage of hydrogen, percentage of oxygen. How will you determine that? Yes, 100 minus the percentage of carbon and hydrogen because the question clearly states that the organic compound contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Once you know the percentage of all three, applying the method that we have learnt in the earlier video, we can easily determine the empirical and molecular formula of the compound. 
easy go ahead and solve it then. Now come to the second question it is uh, very much similar to the first question where we have got 4.2 milligrams of an organic acid we are getting this much of carbon dioxide this much of water why do not you note down this question go ahead please note down this question. So, when you practice later on you will have the question in front of you you would not need to be online all the time. Now one way is you can attempt the question in the same way that you have done the first one. I have guided you through steps over here which are slightly different from the first one introducing you to the second method of doing these type of questions and what is that second method? We determine the mass of carbon in the carbon dioxide formed that is very much same as the first one mass of hydrogen in the water formed again as we did in the first question mass of oxygen in the organic acid. Now, here we have got the total mass of the compound we know the mass of carbon we know the mass of hydrogen can you determine the mass of oxygen perfect. Now, comes the difference here we are going to calculate the number of moles of carbon in the sample. Hmm? So, number of moles of carbon is mass divided by the RAM very good number of moles of hydrogen number of moles of oxygen finally determine the molar ratio of the three elements carbon hydrogen and oxygen and that gives you the empirical formula. And of course, you can determine the molecular formula when the vapor density is 44 do you remember the relation between molar mass and vapor density yes molar mass is twice of vapor density if you have been referring to the earlier lessons. So, you notice that the same question can be done in two different ways it depends upon what you are able to relate to and there is no end to the method. You can also have a third or a, a third method which I will be happy if you can share it in the comments section in case you know of any other method. Are we ready to have you attempted these questions have you got the answers hmm, I am not giving the answers right away because then you will have a tendency to just note down the answers. Let us go on to question number 3 and 4. Question number 3 and 4 are very straightforward compound of potassium on analysis we have been given the data you have to determine its molecular formula vapor density is given do not forget the column method remember we had done it as columns you can do it as columns you can do it as um, you know a normal question uh, does not make a difference whatever suits you you can do it that way. Hmm? Come to the fourth question here we have got an anhydrous salt anhydrous means one which does not have water attached to it. You have given been given the percentage composition of the salt without the water. 1.615 grams of this anhydrous salt on being left open in air becomes this much. Why will it become this much? Yes, it absorbs water from the surrounding. Now, assuming the salt is completely hydrated determine its simple formula you have been given the atomic masses. If you know these type of questions why do not you go ahead and attempt them then you can check whether the method is correct or not. For those who are struggling with these type of questions we have got 1.615 grams of the anhydrous salt and 2.875 grams of the hydrated salt that means how much of water is there what is the mass of water in this particular compound very good 2.875 minus 1.615 that gives you the mass of water. Now, once you know the mass of water you can also determine the percentage of water in the compound correct. So, we will have zinc, sulfur, oxygen and the fourth part directly would be water instead of taking the element we are taking the water we will take instead of its relative atomic mass we will take its relative molecular mass 
percentage of water you have already calculated over here and the rest of the steps remain the same. Go ahead and attempt this question. Question number 5 is very much similar to what you have uh, done in question number 4. So, this is a practice question for you. Question number 6, again this AgNO3 is actually AgNO3. Yes, yes teacher we know, I am so glad that you know. Silver nitrate reacts with sodium chloride to give you a precipitate of AgCl. We are reacting it with in order to determine its purity. Okay, would you like to read the question yourself? Take time to read the question. Okay. What is the amount of pure NaCl in the above sample? Now, we have started with um, 6.5 grams of the sample which is impure. It is giving us 14.35 grams of AgCl. Now, this AgCl is what we will weigh in order to determine what is the amount of pure NaCl. So, let us write down an equation for this. Now, see over here, we have got NaCl plus AgNO3 gives you AgCl plus NaNO3. Now, we know that this 14.35 grams is the pure AgCl. So, how much of NaCl had we originally taken? So, we do reverse, we compare NaCl and AgCl. See, unitary method can be applied either way. So, you will put the RMM of NaCl because this equation is already balanced is giving you how much of AgCl? The RMM of AgCl, correct and then we will have how much of NaCl is going to give you 14.35 grams of AgCl. Simple unitary method, correct. Now, if you let us suppose we have got um, 3.5 grams, let us go back to the question. Now, we started with 6.5 grams of the sample. Let us suppose according to the equation, we get NaCl as 5.3 grams, right? That means out of 6.5 grams, only 5.3 grams is pure NaCl. So, what will be its percentage? Purity, apply the logic of percentages the pure divided by total into 100. Very good. So, we go on to the next question. Seventh question. Seventh and eighth question um, involve reduction oxidation. So, read the seventh question, try it yourself. Pause the video. See or understand the explanation later on only if you are not able to do it. Hydrogen is a very good oxidizing agent for oxides of metals. Determine amount of hydrogen used up at STP and the weight of iron obtained on reduction of 1 kg of ferric oxide with hydrogen. A big hint as I said it is a guided worksheet. A big hint over here is to write a balanced. Do not forget that it has to be a balanced equation, right? So, we will have Fe2O3 ferric oxide plus hydrogen giving us iron plus H2O. This equation is not balanced, balanced it, balance it and rest is easy, right? Eighth question. Eighth question now, potassium chlorate is an oxidizing agent. Again, apologies, potassium chlorate is KClO3, is an oxidizing agent, releases oxygen on heating. The oxygen produced can be used to convert coke to carbon dioxide. Oh yes, it is not the drinking coke, we are not talking about carbonated drinks over here. Step 1, as I told you in the earlier lesson. Write the chemical equation and balance it. So, this is our first equation. Second, carbon plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide. 
balance both the equations. So, we have probably got a 2 and a 2 and a 3 over here. Determine the amount of coke which can be oxidized starting with 70 grams of potassium chlorate. Now, you have got 70 grams of KClO3 over here. So, how much of carbon can be oxidized with it? So, 70 grams is giving you some oxygen. Can you determine that oxygen? That oxygen is being used up in the second equation. So, let us suppose you get x grams of oxygen. So, that x grams of oxygen will oxidize how much of coke? Simple. There is another way to do it. Let us see that. So, you have been provided with 70 grams of KClO3 and we want to know how much of coke can be reduced with sorry oxidized with that. Potassium chlorate 2 moles of this is releasing 3 moles of oxygen. So, these 3 moles are be to be used up in the second equation. My second equation is already balanced. So, but I have to use these 3 oxygen multiplying the second equation by 3. The 3 oxygen being generated in the first equation are being used up in the second one. So, we have 2 KClO3 plus 3 coke is giving us 2 KCl plus 3 CO2. Now, see this is only for numerical purposes because the actual reaction is made up of two parts, but only to correlate it numerically I have converted into a it into a simple equation right. Now, it is very simple KClO3 and coke 2 moles of this are oxidizing are able to give enough oxygen to oxidize 3 moles of carbon. 70 grams, 70 grams means 70 divided by whatever is the RMM of potassium chlorate will re oxidize how much of carbon and RMM of potassium chlorate I am sure you would have found by now. So, there are two different ways of doing the question. You know a third way, most welcome to share it with me or with your friends. I hope you are writing down the questions as well so you can refer to them later on and for the atomic masses they are already listed over here iron 56, hydrogen 1, potassium 39 and all of these carry the unit of yeah, what was earlier called as AMU or now it is called as U. There is a separate video where I have introduced the concept of atomic mass. So, if you have any doubts, please refer to that video. If you want, I can provide the link to the same in this worksheet. We go on to the ninth question. It is a pretty simple one, Himalayan salt. Basically, we will take the formula as NaCl and cane sugar. So, we will take the formula as C12 H22O11. And you have to find their cost per mole and determine which is more expensive per mole. It is pretty simple, right? Um, now, these questions you see, you must be wondering why you should be doing these questions when maybe your school has cut down on this portion, the school does not uh, want to include this portion in your syllabus. It is to widen your horizons, it is to widen your thinking. You are starting a new journey to learning, learning completely different aspects of a subject. So, if your basics are very clear, you will not have problem in any of the concepts, you will be able to apply these concepts to complex problems so that your journey into learning becomes happy. Let us go on to the next question. Have you noted it down? 1 kg of copper carbonate was heated. Calculate the amount of copper oxide obtained. Assuming the conditions are STP, 
what is the volume of CO2 obtained and if the third assumption so after you have calculated it is not starting from the beginning. If the sample of copper carbonate was only 70 percent pure what would be the yield of copper oxide? Now this is a very direct question please attempt it but can you tell me what will be the first step in doing this question? Very good you will have to write the balanced chemical equation which I am sure you would have done by now. Question number 11 is based on the concept of limiting reagent which has already been covered. Why do not you give it a try? Go ahead copy the question. Question number 12 is based on molarity and I have tried to keep it as a very simple and direct question where we have got molarity is number of moles of the substance divided by volume of the solution in liters. So, the only thing that you have to be careful over here is the units that we are using in this particular question. Now, question number 13 is a little lengthy one and what does it say is that you have been uh, provided with a bottle of concentrated H2SO4 whose purity is 98 percent and the density is 1.84 gram per cc. You see in the laboratory when we uh, prepare solutions we prepare solutions from the concentrated solution. So, from we, we are provided with concentrated solutions and we uh, prepare the dilute solution from that or the solution of the concentration that we are required to prepare. How do we go about it? This question is also requiring you to strengthen your knowledge about practicals because you will be preparing different types of solutions in the laboratory for your volumetric calculations. So, how do we go about it? Simple, pen and paper ready and start attempting or start doing the steps one by one here, ok. Um, let us start. So, 98 percent concentrated H2SO4 means how much of H2SO4 is there in 100 grams? Yes, 98 grams, simple. Now, what is the corresponding number of moles of H2SO4 calculated in part A above? Now that you know the mass of H2SO4 divided by its RMM gives you the number of moles, perfect, 98 divided by 98. C part what is the volume of 100 grams of the solution? I provided you the hint. Remember the relation between mass, volume and density. But what will be the unit of the volume you are calculating? Very correct. It will be in cc because density is gram per cc. Next, calculate the molarity of this solution. Now, you have got the number of moles, you have got the volume of the solution, convert it to liters, calculate the molarity. You want 1 liter of 0.1 molar solution. So, what volume of the above solution will you now take to prepare the solution that you require? Hmm? So, let us go ahead. Very good, go ahead M1 V1 is equals to M2 V2 as simple as that. The molarity of the solution that you have into what volume are you going to take should give us a point 1 molar solution is that that is what we have included in the question 0 0.1 molar right. So, we have got a 0, we have got to prepare a 0 0.1 molar solution, right. So, M2 is 0 0.1 molar and what volume we want to prepare is what will be your V2. Now, based on this data, can you also determine the molality of the solution? Give it a try. 
please make a note of the question if you haven't done so and to determine molality we've already discussed this discussed this uh, while doing the lesson either you can apply the formula or you can do it by steps both will be acceptable the 14th question is just like question number 13 except for the fact that instead of asking you to do it step by step what i've done is directly stated the question as it is given in the textbooks or as it is given in the exams or tests right go ahead and attempt it on your own and feel confident in the topic if you have understood you can always use this worksheet to test yourself after a few days you can log on to the channel go through the worksheet put the voice on mute don't run the voice uh, recording and you can attempt this worksheet and see how much of it you are able to use stay connected because new videos will be uploaded frequently stay safe stay healthy stay indoors take care